What's going on? Steve here with IBC Global. In today's video, we are going to answer a question we recently received, which is, what is the difference between the guaranteed rate and the dividend rate with a whole life insurance policy? Let's break it down. So with a whole life insurance policy, depending on the company that you choose, you'll see a total dividend interest rate that the company is paying to all policyholders that have whole life insurance. So for example, you might take out a life insurance policy with a company that has a 6% dividend interest rate. So the question is, what's the difference between the dividend piece or the dividend rate and the guaranteed rate? Well, the guaranteed rate is the minimum floor associated with your whole life insurance policy. Now, the guaranteed rate will range depending on the product you select. Different companies have products that offer different guaranteed rates. So we do want to know what that is as it does have a direct relationship to this question. So. For example, let's assume we pick a product that has a guaranteed rate of 3%. So how does this work? Do you get the guaranteed rate and the dividend rate with your policy? No. What you receive is just the total dividend interest rate. The dividend rate includes the guaranteed piece. How the insurance company actually breaks this down is you've got your guaranteed floor of 3%, then you have what is called a surplus. Let's call it a surplus rate, just so everything is consistent here. And the surplus is the difference between whatever the guaranteed rate is and then the total dividend interest rate. When I say total dividend interest rate, the 6%, what I mean when I say this is when you look up the dividend rate for the insurance company that you have your whole life insurance policy with, that's the rate you see. So for example, a 6% dividend rate, if you looked at Mass Mutual's 2023 dividend rate, it would be 6% if you were to Google search that. So if you pick a product with them that has a 3% guaranteed rate, here's how it'll work. The total dividend that you receive is 6%. The guaranteed floor is 3%. That's the minimum cash value interest rate. They declared an additional surplus of 3% giving you six. It's a lot going on there, I know. <laughs> I, hope that, I hope I didn't make that too confusing. Point being is you've got your total dividend interest rate, that's what you'll receive. You'll see that adjust each year. The guaranteed piece is just the minimum. A Little bit more I wanna hit on just to add some clarification here because this topic is way more confusing than it needs to be, in my opinion, when you look at whole life insurance and when you're interested in the cash value and you're just trying to figure out what is my cash value growing by? Like, I just wanna know how much money I received from the insurance company. Where I'm going with this is when you look at a life insurance illustration, you'll see an annual dividend column. If you have a whole life insurance policy with a company that's paying a 6% dividend rate, when you look at that dividend column, common sense would tell you and I that that assumes what rate? 6% or whatever the dividend rate is with that insurance company. However, that is not how it works. The dividend column only reflects the surplus piece, meaning the total cash value growth is not accounted for in that dividend column. That's important to be aware of, especially if you're trying to understand exactly what you're getting from the insurance company in terms of total growth. So we're gonna look at an example of this. We'll look at an example with a Guardian illustration. And to provide a little bit of information on this, we're going to look at a product that has a guaranteed rate of 3%. So that's your guaranteed rate. You know what Guardian's total dividend rate is for 2023? I know we're close to 2024 at the time of shooting this video. Their total dividend rate is 5.75%. So based on what we mentioned earlier, what would the dividend column represent in this case when we look at this actual illustration? Would it represent the dividend rate of 
No, it would not. It would be the difference between 575 and the guaranteed rate. So what it would be is 275. And here's the part that I don't like at all. All of these numbers are gross rates. Meaning, if you've got 100 grand in cash value and the dividend rate is 575, that should grow by what? $5,750. But you won't see that actually happen. I'll show you what we will look at here. Here's really what people are interested in, including me, is just what's the net growth? So let's start with the illustration. Here we go. And I'm just going to go down to the ledger statement, which gives us a breakdown of dividends and all of the information we want. There we go. Okay. So 40-year-old individual. When we look at this, what do we got going on? You see he's funding 100K per year for 10 years. Policy is juiced for cash value. There's your base premium up top. There's your PUA rider. You've got a term rider. All that good stuff we talk about all the time. Here's what we want to focus on though. This column, highlighted in yellow, end of year dividend. First year, we see a zero. That's often the case with most companies and products. Some companies will pay a small dividend in the first year, but usually you'll see little or even a zero there. Beginning the second year, you see a dividend of 52.40. Now, if you look at your cash value growth, look at this. Year one, you're $83,000 in change. You added 100K, and now you're at $81,000 in change. Did you get your full 100K back? No. You got less back than what you paid in. So when you see a dividend of 5240, what does it make you think? Do you feel like you gained money or lost money that year? I would feel like I gained money that year. That's how much I gained. However, when I just look at the growth from year to year, I'm still in the red because I did not even get my full $100,000 back. So that's the kind of stuff we like to look at. And the reason why is because I, I still have insurance expenses and such with the policy. It's maximized for cash value, but I'm still in the red in the first two years in this example. So we can look at this year over year. I'm gonna pull it up on Excel, but here's what we'll hit on first. Let's look at year 10 to 11. Why we're gonna look at that is because it's nice and simple. You're out of pocket is zero that year. You pay nothing at all. So all we have to look at is what the cash value grew by this year. Year 10, your cash value is $1,147,000. The next year, when you paid nothing in, your cash value is $1,204,000. So how much did you grow by there? 50,000? A little bit more. It's closer to $60,000 when you look at it. What's the dividend column read in that year? $26,000 and change. So the growth is close to 60, but your dividend only shows $26,000. Like what's going on here? The dividend piece, remember, only reflects the surplus, meaning the guaranteed piece is not included in here. What we could do is look at the guaranteed values in the illustration. You just go up a couple pages and you would do the same thing where you look at the year to year cash value growth based on the guarantees. This way we can see what the guaranteed growth is and such. The easiest way to do it though would be to do this. So here's the exact illustration we just looked at, which will answer the question, what's the net growth I'm getting? So here you go, annual funding, exact same thing. Here's your cash value. Break even is year five in this example. Here's your dividends that were on the illustration. Now, this will change each year as the dividend rate changes and if your funding varies at all, but you'll see where I'm going. There's your dividend. Here's the actual cash value growth. And the actual growth represents what you are getting from the insurance company. Just to, to isolate this point here, look at year two to three. So year two, you're at 181 and change. Year three, you added 100K 
and now you're at 282 and change. What this is representing, let's highlight it in yellow, is the fact that you got your 100K back plus another 1292 in year three. That's your net cash value growth. It's less than the dividend that year. And you'll see in cases like this, it might be less than the dividend for a couple years, but what's always going to happen is it gets to a point where the net cash value growth is going to exceed the dividends because the guaranteed rate is included in the net cash value growth where the dividend is again only the surplus. So to recap, the difference between the two, the dividend rate and the guaranteed rate, is the dividend rate, when we look at the actual rate, includes the guaranteed piece. The guaranteed rate is the minimum floor, what you would receive if the insurance company paid no dividends. And when you look at a life insurance illustration, the dividend column only reflects the difference between the guaranteed rate on your product and the total dividend interest rate. With all of that said, if you, again, just want to know the net cash value growth, you can do exactly what we did on Excel. You can do that with both the non-guaranteed and guaranteed values. What we do is track actual performance of policies. So individuals that work with us as time passes, will look at what actually happened year over year and then match it with the original illustration too to make sure that it's performing uh, as as what was illustrated. With all of that said, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Do let us know. Feel free to leave any comments uh, below. Hit the like button and subscribe for more if you enjoyed it. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve here with IBC Global. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're interested in a whole life insurance policy and you'd like to work with our company in setting it up, please visit our website, ibcglobalinc.com. We would love to work with you if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helps.